In this video, I'm gonna show you how to download, install, and configure GNS3 version 2.2. Now, at the time of this recording, the software is still in beta. So please note, if you've got an important project or you're studying for an exam, don't go and install the software. If by the time you're watching this video, it's now the official release of GNS3, then feel free to download and install GNS3 version 2.2 but at the time of this recording, it's still in beta. So only download and install this if you wanna test the new features in GNS3 2.2. It's not recommended that you download and install beta software if you've got an important project. So typically, when you wanna download software, you go to gns3.com and you click download. Notice this is the current release of GNS3 at the time of this recording version 2.1.21. So that is the official release that you should be using at the time of this recording. What I'm gonna do here is go to GitHub. So I'm gonna to go to github.com forward slash GNS3 forward slash GNS3 GUI forward slash releases. Here you can find all the releases of GNS3. GNS3 is open source software released under the GNU public license. So you can find all the releases of GNS3 on this webpage. So scrolling down, we can see version 2.1.21. This is the latest release. But what I wanna do is get this release, version 2.2 beta 3. So under assets, I'm gonna click GNS3 2.2 beta 3 all-in-one executable. That's because I'm running this installation on a Windows 10 computer. So I wanna get the executable for Windows. This is the GNS3 GUI. What I also wanna do is get the VMware Workstation GNS3 VM. It's recommended that you use the GNS3 VM. A lot of appliances, including Cisco appliances such as iOS V, iOS V Layer 2, ASAV, require the use of the GNS3 VM. So we wanna get the GNS3 VM. That means we need to have some hypervisor software. In this example, I selected VMware Workstation. That means I need to download VMware Workstation or have it pre-installed on my computer. Now you can use ESXi or VirtualBox or Hyper-V, but in my example, I'm using Windows 10 and I wanna use a VMware Workstation. Now at the time of this recording, there are issues with VMware Workstation Player. So I'm gonna get VMware Workstation Pro. I'm gonna select Downloads, and I'm gonna select Workstation Pro. I'm gonna download Workstation Pro for Windows. And I'm gonna click Download Now. Now if you don't have a username, then create one. And click sign in. You need to select that you agree to the license agreement. So I'm gonna do that, click accept, and then click save to download the VMware Workstation software. So what I've downloaded is the GNS3 GUI software. I've downloaded the GNS3 VM. What I'll do is extract that zip file. So this is an OVA which essentially allows me to run the GNS3 VM within VMware Workstation. So there's the OVA extracted. So again, there's my directory, there's the OVA. I'm busy downloading VMware Workstation. So as soon as that's downloaded, I'll be able to install that. But before I do that, I'm gonna install the GNS3 GUI. Now remember at the moment, the GNS3 software consists of two main components. We have the GNS3 GUI, which you're gonna install on your Windows computer as an example, and you have the GNS3 VM, which in Windows needs to run within 
hypervisor software such as VirtualBox or VMware Workstation or Hyper-V. It's still recommended to use VMware Workstation if you're running locally, but Hyper-V support is available now and so is VirtualBox. VirtualBox recently supported nested virtualization, but only on AMD processors. So if you've got an Intel processor, you still need to use VMware Workstation. Again, you could use VMware Workstation Player, but there's been a bunch of issues with VMware Workstation Player. I'm gonna click yes to start the installation. And in this video, I'm not gonna go through all the options in a lot of detail. Basically, I'm just gonna select the default options. I'm gonna click next. GNS3 is once again licensed under the GNU General Public License. You have to agree to the license. GNS3 is free software. I'm gonna click agree to agree to the license. I'm gonna use the default GNS3 start menu. Various GNS3 software can be installed. Some of it is required, such as the GNS3 executable, WinPCAP if you wanna capture traffic off your Ethernet network cards. Wireshark is generally recommended. There's other software that you can install. I'm gonna stay with the defaults and click next. I'm gonna use the default installation directory and click install. GNS3 now installs various components. So in this example, Microsoft Visual C++ is installed. Other software components are installed. You basically just need to leave it. And if you receive any more pop-ups such as installation of Wireshark or WinPCAP, just install the defaults. Generally, just go with the defaults unless you wanna do something else. So here's an example is WinPCAP. I'm gonna click next, click agree, click install, click finish. Notice Wireshark is now downloaded. So the GNS3 executable doesn't include Wireshark. It connects to the internet and then downloads Wireshark and installs it. So as you can see here, Wireshark has been installed in silent mode. So again, you simply need to wait for GNS3 to install the components. QMU is installed, bunch of other software is installed. And as you can see, the installation is completed. I'm gonna click next. Now you can install the SolarWinds standard tool set. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna say no and click next. And I'm gonna allow GNS3 to start and I'm gonna click finish. A thank you page is displayed. I'm gonna close that. And notice GNS3 has started up. I'm gonna click cancel at this point. I don't wanna use the setup wizard. You can see the server summary. This is the name of my Windows computer. You can see the amount of RAM being used and CPU being used on this computer. So the GNS3 GUI has installed successfully. If you have any problems, I suggest you shut it down and run it again. And if you have additional problems, then reboot your computer and run it again. I'm gonna stop it showing this menu and click cancel. You need to wait until you see the server display. So in this example, it's running fairly slowly, but notice I've waited until I see the server in the server summary. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is click new blank project. And I'm gonna call this first project. I suggest that you create a basic project initially. So what I'm gonna do is select all devices and I'm simply gonna create a very basic topology of two VPCs, PCs and an ethernet switch. Now notice in this example, GNS3 is using the old icons. So what I'm gonna do is select both those PCs, right click and change the symbols. And I have this option now to select affinity symbols. These nice new symbols have been added to GNS3. So what I'm gonna do here is select client, click apply and notice I have two client computers. This looks a lot better than the old symbols. I'm gonna change the switch symbol. In this example, I'm gonna use affinity square blue. 
select switch, select OK. So I've got a switch and two PCs. What I'll do is add a link, select the first PC, click Ethernet zero, select the switch, select Ethernet zero, select the switch again, Ethernet one, PC two, Ethernet zero. So I've got the two PCs connected to the switch. I'm gonna show interface labels. So my interface labels are now displayed. I'll start up these devices and I'll open up consoles to them. So here are my two VPCS devices. What I'll do is change the PuTTY settings. Make that clearer, so there's PC1. I'll change the settings of PC2. So there's PC2. So I've got GNS3 running with two PCs. What I'll do here is set the IP address of the first PC to that. And I'll set the IP address of the second PC to that. And what should happen is PC1 should be able to ping PC2, which it can do. So PC1 can ping PC2, and hopefully PC2 can ping PC1. So there you go. I've got GNS3 working as a standalone Windows application on my computer. I have to save the configuration of my VPCS devices if I want to keep that. So I'll do that by using the save command and then I'll stop this topology and I'll close GNS3 down. So again, that's the Windows GUI running on Windows 10.